Today we are going to summarize Blindness Essay by José Saramago, who was a Portuguese writer who won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1998. He wrote novels, short stories, poetry, essays, and plays, with a style characterized by irony, imagination, understanding, and social criticism. Some of his most famous works are The Gospel According to Jesus Christ, Essay on Lucidity, Raised from the Ground, and The Flashes of Death. The Yellow Disc Lit Up of the approaching cars, two sped off before the red signal came on. The green man's silhouette appeared at the crosswalk indicator. Thus begins an essay on blindness, with drivers impatient, waiting for the light to turn green for them, but when it does, not all of them start. The first in the middle row stands still, some drivers have already jumped onto the road, ready to push the damaged car or it doesn't bother. They knock impatiently on the closed windows. The man inside turns his head towards them, to one side, to the other, you can see that he is shouting something, from the movements of his mouth you can see that he is repeating a word, one, no, two, I'm blind. Nobody would say it. At first glance, the man's eyes appear healthy, the iris is clear, luminous, the white scara, compact as porcelain. Eyelids wide open, facial skin twitching, eyebrows suddenly twitching, all of which anyone can verify are anxiety disorders. They help him out of the car while the man desperately repeats that he is blind, that he sees everything white, imploring someone to take him home. A man offers to drive the car and take the man home. They park near the blind man's house, once there the blind man says that he doesn't need anything else, for not letting a stranger into his house, and the good Samaritan leaves. When his wife arrives, they decide to call an eye doctor, the blind man realizes that the man has not left him the car key, even so. They look for the car but cannot find it, the man has stolen it. The woman explained to the receptionist that she was the person who had called half an hour ago about her husband's blindness, and she ushered them into a room where other patients were waiting. There was an old man with a black bandage covering one eye, a boy who seemed to have a squint and who was accompanied by a woman who must have been the mother, a young woman with dark glasses, two other people with no particular signs in sight, but no blind because the blind do not go to the ophthalmologist. The blind man tells the doctor what has happened and tells him that he sees everything white, the doctor examines him, everything is fine, his eyes are perfect, and he finds it inexplicable that he sees everything white. He has never seen or studied a similar case, he sends him some evidence and they leave. That night the blind man dreams that he is blind. The man who stole his car feels some remorse, since he has already been in jail for robberies and a mixture of fear, he begins to look at the lights obsessively, leaves the car far from the place where he should take it, gets out of the car and has not yet taken thirty steps, when he goes blind. The doctor sees all his patients and then goes home, where he calls another doctor on the phone and gives him the details of the case of the blind man and after dinner, he tells his wife about the case of the man who has gone blind in such a particular way, he cannot understand what could have happened to him. His wife kisses him before going to sleep. And suddenly he felt afraid as if he too was going to go blind, a moment later when he was gathering the books to order them on the shelf, he realized that he had stopped seeing his hands, later he knew that he was blind. The girl with the dark glasses had gone to the doctor's office for conjunctivitis. It can be said that she is a prostitute, because this woman goes to bed in exchange for money, but she does it when she wants and with whom she wants. He has a profession and takes advantage of the hours that remain free to give some happiness to the body and enough satisfaction to his needs, both the particular and the general ones. She lives how she wants and also gets all the pleasure she can from it, someone she knows beforehand is waiting for her, she enters the hotel with a natural air. Ten minutes later she was already naked, at fifteen she was moaning, at 18 she was whispering words of love that she no longer had to pretend, at 20 she was beginning to lose her mind, at 21 she felt her body go crazy with pleasure, at 20 22 shout, now, now. And when she regained consciousness, she said exhausted and happy, I still see everything white. The car thief is taken by a policeman to his house where his wife received him, 
the girl with the dark glasses who lives with her parents is also taken by another policeman. The doctor does not panic and goes to bed without waking his wife, he thinks that he has to inform the health authorities, warn of what could be becoming a national catastrophe, an unknown type of blindness. He is still in bed and then when she wakes up he tells her that he has gone blind, he calls the ministry but no one listens to him, so they call the director of their own hospital service. Half an hour later the phone rings, it was again the director of the ophthalmological service, but the voice now sounded different. We have here a child who has also suddenly gone blind, he sees everything white, the mother says that she was with him yesterday in his office, I suppose it is a child suffering from divergent squint in the left eye. Three hours later, the ministry calls him, ordering him not to move from his house. A few minutes later, the clinical director of the hospital calls again, nervous, telling him that there are two more cases of sudden blindness. In the afternoon, the ministry calls him again to tell him that they are sending an ambulance. His wife packs a small suitcase, when they call the phone they ask him to come down, his wife gets into the ambulance with him and when the driver protests that only he should come, she replies that she has also just gone blind. But it's a lie. The ministry has three options for the isolation of the blind, an empty disused asylum, military installations and an industrial fair under construction, and in the end also a bankrupt hypermarket. They consider that the asylum is the most appropriate, it is surrounded by a wall and has two wings, one wing is reserved for the blind and another for the contaminated, it also has a central body. Before nightfall, they have already collected all the blind people of whom there has been news and some possible infected people. The first to be transferred to the asylum are the doctor and his wife, there are soldiers on watch, a thick rope acts as a handrail from the entrance gate to the main door of the building. The doctor's wife guides the husband to the nearest room, the entrance has two rows of beds painted gray, the blankets, sheets and bedspreads are the same color. There are more wings, long narrow corridors, a huge kitchen. The doctor asks his wife to leave. For now, it is most likely that I will also go blind one of these days, or within a minute, please don't insist. Besides, I am sure that the soldiers would not let me set foot outside. I'm staying here to help you and to help those who come. But don't tell them I see. The others arrive together, they have picked them up at their homes, the one who went blind first, the thief who stole the car, the girl with the dark glasses and the squint boy without his mother. They each sit on a bed, the two men are very close, but they don't know it, the girl comforts the boy by telling him that his mother will surely arrive soon. Through a loudspeaker, the voice says that the government has assumed its responsibility with this isolation and begins to dictate a series of instructions. We ask everyone's attention to the following instructions. First, the lights will always be on and any attempt to manipulate the switches, which on the other hand do not work, will be useless. Second, leaving the building without authorization will result in the immediate death of whoever attempts it. Third, in each room there is a telephone that can only be used to request replacement of hygiene and cleaning products from outside. Fourth, inmates will wash their clothes manually. Fifth, the choice of room managers is recommended. It is a recommendation, not an order. The inmates will be organized as they see fit, provided they comply with the above rules and those that we are going to state below. Sixth, boxes with food will be deposited three times a day at the entrance door, to the right and to the left, destined, respectively for patients and those possibly infected, seventh, all remains must be burned, considering remains, for all purposes, apart from leftover food, boxes, plates, cutlery, which are made of combustible material, eighth, burning must be carried out in the interior patios of the building or in the fence, ninth, the inmates are responsible for the negative consequences of the burning, tenth, in the event of a fire, be it accidental or intentional, the firefighters will not intervene, eleventh, the inmates must not count on any type of external intervention, in the event that they suffer any other ailment, and also in the event of aggression or disorder among them. Twelfth, in the event of death, any whatever the cause, the inmates will bury the body without formalities in the fence. Thirteenth, communication between the wing for patients and the wing for those possibly infected will be made through the central body of the building, the same one through which they entered. Fourteenth, those infected who become blind will immediately join the second wing, in which the blind are. Fifteenth, this communication will be repeated every day. 
at this time, for information of the new entrance. The government and the nation expect everyone to do their duty. Good night. The doctor says it's clear they're isolated. The doctor proposes that they begin to organize themselves. One of the men stands up abruptly and begins to blame the first blind man for everyone's misfortune. If he had eyes, I would kill him right now, he yelled, pointing to the place where he thought the other was. The detour was not great, but the drama of the gesture was comical, because the accusing finger, tense, pointed towards a nightstand. The man recognizes the thief's voice and says that he doesn't intend to share a room with him, and he shuffles off to avoid tripping, groping with his free hand, but at that moment the thief falls on him and they start to hit each other, with great effort they manage to separate them. Soon the need to go to the bathroom arises, since the squint boy needed to urinate, so the doctor's wife proposes to guide them with the excuse that she had already been in the place for a long time, and that she remembered several things about the place, and they decide to go all together. A line is organized and the thief stands just behind the girl with the dark glasses, stimulated by the perfume that emanates from her and by the memory of a recent erection, he decides to use his hands to greater advantage, one caressing the nape of her neck under her hair and the other direct and unceremoniously touching her breasts, she jerked to escape the rampage. But he had a good grip on her, then the girl kicked back, like a kick, so that the heel of her shoe, thin as a dagger, dug into the thief's bare thigh who let out a cry of surprise and pain. There is nothing to cure the thief and the wound seems serious. The doctor and his wife take him to the kitchen, everything is dirty and they have to bandage him with his own shirt. When they return, the boy has urinated on himself, they all go to look for the bathrooms, and when they arrive at them, it is decided that the men should relieve themselves first, since they do it faster and then the women. The next morning the doctor's wife wakes up afraid of having gone blind, she doesn't want to open her eyes. But he keeps looking, a groan comes from the thief's bed, his wound has become infected, suddenly voices are heard, more people are arriving outside the room. The doctor's wife proposes that they be listed and each one say who they are. Two men spoke at the same time, it always happens the same way, then they both fell silent and it was a third one who started. He paused, it seemed he was going to give his name, but what he said was, 1. I'm a policeman and the doctor's wife thought, he didn't say his name, I'm sure he knows that it doesn't matter here, and already another man was introducing himself, 2. And he followed the example of the first, I'm a taxi driver, the third man said 3. I'm a pharmacy clerk, then. A woman, 4. I'm a bed hotel worker and the last one, 5. I'm an office worker. She's my wife, my wife, the first blind man shouted. Where are you? Tell me, where are you? Here I am, here, she said crying and advancing trembling down the corridor, her eyes wide. It all ended in a touching encounter. The loudspeaker announces that the food has been deposited at the entrance, they have calculated the food for five people, there are bottles of milk and cookies, but they have forgotten glasses, plates, and cutlery. Hours later, the loudspeaker announces that it is possible to go to pick up the midday meal, they are still rations for five, they shout to the soldiers that there are eleven, but the soldiers laugh at them. The wounded person does not want to eat, only drink liquids, in the middle of the afternoon three more blind men enter, expelled from the other wing, suddenly a confusion of shouts and orders is heard, it is a shouting that comes from the street, they are blind brought in herds to the asylum. Little by little, a certain calm is arriving and with the night the blind go to sleep, the only one who remains awake is the thief. He throws himself off the bed and crawls into the hall, where he manages to stand up and dragging his bad leg towards the entrance. When he reaches the entrance, he falls and from there he crawls towards the soldiers, the soldier who is on guard sees the white face of the thief appear between the irons like a ghost, it is fear that makes him aim his weapon and fire a burst at point-blank range. The corpse was left on the ground among the garbage and the fallen leaves of the trees. Now he had to be buried. Only the doctor's wife knew the state of the skull shattered by the discharge. Burying him is a terrible job. When the soldiers bring the food, and since they have not brought breakfast in the morning, there are many blind men who go towards them, the soldiers panic and open fire on the crowd. Now many more have to be buried, from then on, they leave their food near the gate, not in the hall and getting to it, it's already an adventure, they have to organize to get there. 
When they go to eat, they realize that some people have stolen some boxes and there is very little food left to distribute among all, but there is no time to think about it, because shots start to be heard in the street, the army brings about 200 blind people in buses. Here are some who cry, others who scream with fear, rage, others who blaspheme, someone else released a useless and terrible threat. The entrance is absolute chaos, the helpless blind crawl in the hallway, sore from the blows, some trampled on, others on the ground, apart from some shoes that have lost their feet and bags. An old man with a black bandage over one eye comes from the enclosure, he walks in search of shelter, slowly with his arms outstretched. He looks for the way, finds the door of the first room in the right wing, hears voices coming from inside and then asks if there is a bed for him, and for things in life, the dead thief's bed is available. The old man with the black blindfold reveals that he has a radio and tells others how things are outside, for example, he recounts situations such as entire families were going blind, unable to help each other, or the first time a bus driver went blind while moving and left some injured, but as the situation became repetitive, they stopped using buses and cars, as they said it is better to go blind than lose your life, because someone else has gone blind. O oh tells about the first time an airplane crashed as a result of the simultaneous blindness of both pilots. From there, everything that has wheels is abandoned, cars, buses, trucks and even bicycles are left everywhere, because fear has become stronger than the sense of belonging. Rumor has it that a national salvation government is to be formed immediately. All the occupied beds are 240, not counting the blind who sleep on the floor. No imagination, however fertile and creative it may be, can describe the great amount of filth that there is, not only because of the state that the bathrooms quickly reach, but also because the blind begin to use the fence as a spillway for all their relief. They will soon become animals, worse still, blind animals. The doctor's wife thinks that this horror must be remedied and that she can't keep pretending she can't see, but she also thinks about the consequences, she will become a slave, everyone will demand that she feed them, wash them, take them from here to there, some will come to hate her. Blindness has not made them better, nor worse. He decides to announce that he sees the next morning, but the next morning something happens that changes everything, when the blind go for food they come back scared. They haven't let us bring the food, said one, and the others repeated, No! Who? The soldiers? Asked a random voice. No, the blind. What blind? We do not know. I think they must be one of those who came together, the last to arrive. And how is that? Why did they let us bring the food? Asked the doctor. So far there have been no problems. They say that this has ended. That from today, whoever wants to eat will have to pay. It is a large group of the last to have arrived. And they are all- The doctor proposes to go talk to them. The doctor's wife accompanies him, blind from all sides add up. When those who have the food are surrounded, one of them pulls out a gun. The first shot causes a large stucco plate to come loose from the ceiling and fall on unsuspecting heads, increasing panic. They force them to return to the rooms, laughing at them. In each room, they are told to appoint two managers who will be in charge of collecting everything of value, everything of any kind, money, jewelry, rings, bracelets, earrings, watches and then they will take it away and warn them not to leave anything behind because they will do an inspection. When everyone returns to their wings they discuss what to do, but end up collecting all valuables. The only thing the doctor's wife keeps for herself, hanging them on a very high nail, are a pair of scissors. The food they are given in exchange is very little. After a week, the evil blind sent notice that they wanted women. Thus, simply, bring us women is the unexpected, though not entirely unusual demand. It caused the indignation that is easy to imagine. The stunned emissaries who came with the order returned immediately to inform that the rooms had unanimously decided not to abide by the degrading imposition objecting that human dignity could not be lowered to that point, in that case the feminine. The answer was short and dry. If they don't bring us women, they don't eat, the women are clearly not willing. 
One of the blind men with a special sense of timing asks, is there any volunteers? But in each room, protests break out, furies break out, men are morally devastated. They call them pimps, exploiters. The women ask the men in their room, what would have happened if instead of asking for women, they had asked for men? What would you have done? One responded, there are no homosexuals here, said one. Nor prostitutes, she responded in turn. Then silence takes over the room, as if the women understand that defeat will inevitably come, until a woman in her fifties, who is in charge of her elderly mother, says that she will go and one by one, the women say that they will go, there are seven women, including the doctor's wife, the first blind man's wife, the girl with the black glasses, one who was suffering from insomnia and three more. The next day, at dinner time, three blind men from the other side appear at the door of the room asking, how many women are there? When they found out that there were seven of them, they said, so, they are going to have to work a lot tonight, they will practically have three men for every woman. You'll see how they hold up, they laughed again and the one who had asked, how many women are there? He gave the order, come on, let's go. That's if they want to eat tomorrow and give their men something to drink. The evil leader who had a gun chooses first of all, among them he chose the girl with black glasses, when he finished with her, he passed them on to the others, and then he forced the doctor's wife to give him oral sex. The humiliations, the humiliations, the violations, are terrible. It dawns when the wicked blind let the women go, during those hours, they have passed from man to man. They come back deaf, blind, silent, tumbling, only with enough will not to let go of the hand of the one in front of them, one of them literally falls as if her legs had been cut off, dead, the men wait at the door, the doctor and the old man with the black bandage go for food, the salary of shame. For days later the villains go to the next room for more women. The doctor's wife looks up and sees her scissors hanging from a nail, she takes them and goes out. Fifteen women go to the lair of the wicked, when they have just passed, the doctor's wife follows them, none of them notice, they are terrified, not so much because of the rape, but because of the orgy, the shamelessness. And they were taking them to the beds, abruptly undressing them, immediately the usual cries were heard, the pleas, the imploring voices. But the answers, when there were any, did not vary. If you want to eat, you have to spread your legs, and they spread them, some ordered them to use their mouths, like the one that squatted between the knees of the head of the wicked, that didn't say anything. The doctor's wife enters the room and goes to the back where the bed of the head of the villains is and where the boxes of food are piled up. As he advances down the corridor, he watches the movements of the one whom he will soon kill, how pleasure makes her tilt her head back, as if offering her neck, the doctor's wife stands behind him. The kneeling blind woman continues her work, the woman raises the scissors, the blades slightly separated and when the orgasm is about to come, the doctor's wife lowers her arm violently and the scissors bury with all their force in the blind man's throat the scream of the the man is barely heard, but it is the cry of the blind woman, when a stream of blood hits her face, that alarms the wicked. What's wrong? Why are you yelling like that? They asked. But now the blind woman had a hand over her mouth, someone whispered in her ear, shut up and then she felt that she was gently pushed back. Don't say anything, it was a woman's voice and this reassured her. The villains realize that their boss is dead, they seem stunned, one of the blind men takes the gun and the cartridges that remain, the women are in a panic wanting to get out of there, but they run into the villains, they believe that they are attacking them and great confusion ensues, some women manage to find the door. Others struggle to free themselves from the hands that hold it, some try to strangle the enemy and add one dead to another dead. The blind man with the gun fires a shot into the air, then, the doctor's wife decides to advance, hitting left and right, making her way. In his escape he sticks the scissors into the chest of another and then tells the wicked that now, if they want to stay alive, they will be the ones to collect the food. He walked away a few steps, still steady. Then she advanced along the wall of the corridor almost fainting, in a moment her knees buckled and she fell round, 
her eyes clouded over, I'm going to go blind, she thought, but then she realized that it wouldn't be this time, it was her tears that covered her vision, tears like she had never cried in her life. I have killed, he said in a low voice, I wanted to kill and I killed. But food becomes scarce for quite a few days. The soldiers stop bringing the boxes, the only food left in the asylum is what the villains have stored, some men try to get them out of their lair where they have entrenched themselves. But they defend themselves with shots. One night, a woman decides to set fire to the beds that serve as a barricade in the wicked room. She kneels at the entrance to the room, slowly pulls the covers out, pulls out a lighter that she has kept jealously and little by little it lights up. But suddenly the flames multiply, become a burning curtain and the woman's own body feeds the bonfire. The fire jumps quickly from bed to bed, the villains try to reach the windows but when air enters, it feeds the fire, the other blind people run terrified through the corridors, full of smoke, they shout, fire, fire, in each room there is only one door, the blind push each other, the corridor is filled with people. The only one who can guide the others to salvation is the only one who sees, the doctor's wife, she grabbed the hand of the boy with the squint, they would have to tear off his arm to get him to let go, with the other hand he held the hand of her husband and behind him comes the girl with the dark glasses, and then the old man with the black blindfold, where one is, there is another, and then the first blind man and then his wife, all together as one. The doctor's wife says that she is going to talk to the soldiers and runs followed by her men towards the exit and arrives practically naked, she screams for help through the smoke, but no one responds, nothing moves, the soldiers have left. The doctor's wife shouts that they are free, the roof of the left wing is collapsing, scattering flames everywhere, those who have managed to get out rush towards La Tapia screaming, the gate is wide open. It is night, they are exhausted, many blind people sit on the ground, the most urgent thing is to find food. The entire group of the doctor's wife knows that she sees. She asks them where their houses are. If they went from house to house, from the closest to the furthest away, the first would be that of the girl with the dark glasses, the second that of the old man with the black blindfold, then that of the doctor's wife and finally that of the first blind man. They decide to follow this itinerary, when daylight begins to rain, a fine but persistent drizzle, laboriously, hesitating, grabbing each other, they set off towards the center of the city but the doctor's wife wants to find a place to leave them safe and go alone in search of food. The idea is to leave them in a store, keeping the name of the street and the number of the door, to return. The girl with dark glasses told him, wait here, don't move, and he went to look through the door of a pharmacy, he thought he saw some bundles lying inside, he knocked on the windows, one of the shadows moved, someone got up, Turning his face towards the place where the noise came from, they are all blind, thought the doctor's wife, not understanding why they were there, perhaps it is the pharmacist's family, she thought, but if so, why aren't they in their own house? But one of the men who sleeps in the pharmacy tells him that since everyone is blind, they often cannot find their homes. So they go into the first house they find or sleep in the shops, which is easier and during the day they wander, looking for food, the group from the pharmacy leaves the premises, other groups also appear along the street, isolated people. Leaning against the walls, there are men relieving the morning urgency of the bladder, women sheltering from abandoned cars. She takes her group to that empty pharmacy and tells them don't leave it there, and if they kick you out, stay at the door together until she arrives. There were many people on the street, how will they orient themselves? Wondered the doctor's wife. They did not orient themselves, they walked brushing against the houses with their arms outstretched forward, they continually bumped into each other, like ants that go on a chain, but when this happened there were no protests, nor did they need to speak. One of the families would pull away from the wall from the one they were coming from in the opposite direction, and so they would continue until the next bump, every now and then, stopping, sniffing at the entrances of the shops to see if they smelled food, whatever it was, then continuing on their way, turning a corner and disappearing from sight. Shortly after another group appeared. The stores seem to have been eaten from the inside, they are like empty shells. 
The doctor's wife is quite far away now, when she sees a supermarket, inside there are only empty shelves, broken windows, blind people wandering the aisles, most of them on all fours sweeping the floor with their hands, suddenly, she thinks that there must be a large store somewhere else. He looks for a door, finally, in a dark corridor, he sees what looks like a freight elevator, a door that leads to some stairs, when he closes it, he stays in the dark and so he goes down the stairs until he reaches the store, finds some matches and fills the bags with food, enough wealth to buy the city. Before leaving, she sits on the ground, opens a package of chorizo, another of slices of black bread, a bottle of water and eats without remorse, then she goes out with three bags in each hand, she has to pass between the blind people, one of them sniffs the air and says it smells of chorizo, she starts to run. It's raining torrentially, when he reached the street, better, he thought, panting, his legs shaking, so the smell will be less noticeable. Someone had grabbed her by the last rag that barely covered her from the waist up, now she was bare-breasted. Everywhere there are blind men with their mouths open to the heights, quenching their thirst, she reads the names of the streets, but there is a moment when she thinks she is lost, that she will never find them, she sits down, tired, desperate on the ground and begins to cry. The dogs surround her and one of them licks her face, the woman strokes her head, she finds a map of the city in a marquee and manages to orient herself, the dog follows her and thus she arrives at the store. The doctor's wife tells them everything that has happened and what they have told her, the doctor says that he still has the keys to his house, he inserts three fingers into a small pocket of his ragged pants and there they are. After eating they decide to look for shops to put on their shoes and dress properly, and then go to the first stop, the house of the girl with the dark glasses. The music has ended, there has never been such silence in the world, theaters and cinemas serve those who have been left without a home, or have stopped looking for a home, some of these places were used for quarantines, when the government still believed that the white evil could be stopped with tricks and instruments, which were also useless in the past against yellow fever and other infections. The house of the girl with the dark glasses is closed, no one answers when there is a knock on the door. She lived with her parents, she doesn't know what happened to them, the neighbor downstairs, the first one, a very old woman, she says she doesn't know where they are, that the house has been occupied by her and she lets them go into the patio to go up the fire escape. The girl with the dark glasses wants to stay there waiting for her parents, but the doctor's wife suggests that they not disperse, that they stay together. The old man with the black blindfold doesn't have a home, he lived alone, in a rented room, he has no family, the boy with the squint doesn't want to be separated from the girl with the dark glasses. So there they all go together, they arrive at the doctor's house at sunset, who takes out his keys and opens the door. Nobody has come in since they left, the first thing the doctor's wife does is ask everyone to undress and with some sheets and towels they try to clean themselves as best they can and then sitting at the table they have dinner. It began to rain early in the morning, the wind blew a downpour against the windows that resounded like a thousand lashes, the doctor's wife woke up, opened her eyes and murmured, as it rains, then closed them again and after a short time woke up abruptly, with the idea that he had something to do. Then she goes out to the terrace where dirty clothes are piled up, and she begins to take advantage of that water, she begins to gather jars, jars, everything that can collect a little of that rain and then she suddenly takes off, her robe wet, and naked, sometimes receiving the caress on her body and other times the lashes of the rain, she begins to wash the clothes, while she washes herself, the girl with the dark glasses and the woman from the first blind, what by presentiments or intuitions, of their inner voices have awakened them, they get undressed and start doing the laundry, among the three of them. The women are already clean, now it's the men's turn, the old man with the black blindfold prefers to wash himself in the bathroom, they put a little clean water in the bathtub and there he kneels, soaps himself, rubs vigorously, washes his head, and suddenly, he feels hands touch his back, they collect the foam from his arms and chest and then spread it gently down his back, he wants to ask who it is but his tongue is tied, he can't. They have to go out to look for more food, the doctor's wife, the first blind man and his wife go, the street is getting worse and worse, dogs sniff everywhere, 
dig in the garbage, someone has a rat in their mouths. You can still find chickpeas in sacks, the doctor's wife fills two of the bags they carry with beans and chickpeas, then they go to the house of the first blind man. It is occupied by a writer with his wife and two daughters, who, in turn, lost their house to other blind men. They decide to let them stay in it, with the promise that they will go home when it is vacated. They returned home carrying enough food for three days. At night, the doctor's wife read to everyone a few pages of a book she took from the library. The subject of the book did not interest the boy with the squint who fell asleep shortly after with his head in the lap of the girl with the dark glasses and his feet on the legs of the old man with the black blindfold. Two days later they go to the doctor's office, they have taken the files, but the instruments are safe, then they return to the house of the girl with the dark glasses, the first thing they see is that her neighbor is on the ground in front of the portal, dead. They decide to bury her in the patio, there is no trace of her parents, she wants to leave them a message in case they return, it has to be something they can recognize by touch, it occurs to the doctor's wife that she might leave a lock of their hair hanging from the doorknob. The girl with the dark glasses bursts into tears, her head falling on her arms folded on her knees. The next day they decide to go to the supermarket store, the doctor's wife and her husband go, the appearance of the streets worsens every hour. They cross a square where groups of blind people entertain themselves listening to the speeches of other blind people. They arrive at the supermarket, the doctor's wife is surpassed through the corridor, increasingly dark, the air saturated with the stench of putrefaction, the doctors rise that there are no people going in and out, or living inside, there is a smell like rottenness, when the doctor's wife opens the door that gives access to the corridor, the smell becomes more intense, she advance wife vomited, what will happen here? She thought between two wretches, and murmured these words over and over again, while she was getting closer to the metal door that led to the basement, confused by nausea, she had not noticed that in the background a diffuse light was perceived, when they leave the corridor her nerves suddenly unleash, the crying becomes a convulsion, there is no way to stop her tears. A few minutes later she says that they are all dead, that they must have hit the cellar door, they rush downstairs in search of food and they all fell down, the cellar is now an immense tomb. The doctor's wife thinks it was her fault when she came out of the cellar that day smelling of sausage. The doctor's wife can barely drag her feet, the shock has left her without strength, she needs to lie down, close her eyes, breathe slowly, if she could be quiet for a few minutes, still, her strength would surely return, but she doesn't want to lie down on the filth on the sidewalk. On the other side of the street there is a church, it will be a good place to rest, the doors are wide open, the floor is almost full, there isn't an inch of free floor, but he finds a space where he lets himself fall. After a while she begins to come to, to feel better, but at that very moment she thought she had gone crazy, the vertigo disappeared, she was now hallucinating. It couldn't be true what his eyes were showing him, that man nailed to the cross with a white bandage covering his eyes. A woman with her heart pierced by seven swords and her eyes also covered by a white bandage, and it wasn't just this man and this woman who were like this, it was all the images in the church that were blindfolded, the sculptures with a white cloth tied around their heads, and the paintings with a thick brush of white paint. It is difficult to tell everyone what has happened, they eat what they have, the doctor's wife says that every day it is more difficult to find food that perhaps they will have to leave the city and go to live in the country. After eating they go to sleep, at night they do not eat, only the squint-eyed child receives something. They sit down to listen to the reading of the book, sometimes they fall asleep or drowsy listening, the first blind man is thinking about his house and the writer who occupies it, when suddenly the inside of his eyelids becomes dark, then a great fear enters him. He believes that he has gone from one blindness to another, that having lived in the blindness of light, he will now go to live in the blindness of darkness. His wife asks him what is wrong with him, and he answers that he has gone blind. His wife tells him that they are all blind, tells him to go to sleep. The advice made him furious, he was there, distressed to a point that only he knew, and his wife couldn't think of anything else but to tell him to go to sleep irritated and already with the answers that he will be escaping from his mouth, 
he opened his eyes and shouted, I see, I see. His first cry generated disbelief, but with the second and third and a few more the evidence grew, I see, I see he hugged his wife, then he ran to the doctor's wife and hugged her, it was also the first time he had seen her, but he knew who she was and he recognized everyone, the doctor asks him if he sees really well as he did before, and he says even better. Then the doctor says what everyone is thinking but no one dares to say out loud, it is possible that this blindness has come to an end, the doctor's wife begins to cry, but the general joy is replaced by nervousness, the old man de la Vendinegra proposes that they all stay there waiting, at a certain moment the first blind man thought to tell his wife that the next day they would go home, I am still blind, she replied, it's the same, I'll take you, he answered. Only those who were there and consequently heard it, with their own ears, were able to understand how such simple words can fit feelings as different as those of protection, pride and authority. The second to recover her sight late at night is the girl with the dark glasses, she has been with her eyes open all the time, as if vision had to enter through them and not be reborn inside, suddenly she says that she thinks she is seeing, she hugs the doctor's wife, it is not known which of the two cries more, the second hug is for the old man with the black blindfold. The third to recover his sight when the morning begins to lighten is the doctor, after the first emotion he wonders, what is going on outside? The answer comes from the floor below, someone goes out into the street shouting, what do you see, if it continues like this the sun will rise over a city in celebration. Partying, it was the banquet in the morning, what was on the table besides little, would repulse any normal appetite, but happiness served as a delicacy for everyone, no one complained, even those who were still blind laughed as if the eyes that already saw were theirs. The girl with the dark glasses decides to go and put a sign on the door of her house so that her parents know about her. The old man with the black blindfold asks her to go with her. The first blind man and his wife decide to go see if the writer has left home. Minutes later, alone, the doctor sits next to his wife. The boy with the squint sleeps at one end of the sofa, through the open window and despite the height of the floor comes the rumor of altered voices, the streets must be full of people the crowd shouts a single word, I see. It begins to seem like a story from another world, the doctor's wife asks her husband why they have gone blind, the doctor says he doesn't know, that maybe one day they will find out why, do you want me to tell you what I'm thinking, tell me, she replied, I believe that we do not remain blind, I believe that we are blind, blind who see, blind who, seen, do not see. The doctor's wife got up, went to the window. He looked down at the garbage-strewn street, at the people who were shouting and chanting. Then he raised his head to the sky and saw everything white, now it's my turn, he thought. And so we have told you, Blindness Essay, by Jose Saramago, his friend Aldemar Hernandez says goodbye, thanks for joining me, and next week we will meet again with, The Unbearable Lightness of Being, by Milan Kundera. Thank you for following, A Latino Loose Between Books. Subscribe to A Latino Loose Among Books, because every week we upload a summary of a book similar to this one.